Hello guys and welcome to the new edition of the Science Chair Educational Series on Chemistry. Today we'll be learning about ionic bonding and the properties of ionic compounds, the first part of our series on chemical combination. So go nowhere and we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. In this series, we will be answering two questions about bonding in atoms, namely, why do atoms combine and how do atoms combine? So let's answer the first question. Atoms combine with one another because they want to attain a stable configuration like the noble gases. The noble gases, which include helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon and radon, have completely filled outermost of valence shells and thereby attain the duplex structure with two electrons in the outermost shell or octet structure with eight electrons in the outermost shell. Note that apart from helium, all other noble gases possess the octet structure or configuration. Now to our next question. Atoms combine with one another in two major ways. They can achieve that by the transfer of electrons or they can do so through the sharing of electrons. Let's now study in details how atoms combine through electrons transfer using the formation of sodium chloride, magnesium oxide, and magnesium chloride. Ionic or electrovalent bonding is a chemical combination that occurs between a metal and a non-metal. It involves the complete transfer of valence electrons from the metallic atom called the electron donor to the non-metallic atom called the electron acceptor, which leads to the formation of oppositely charged ions. In the formation of sodium chloride, the sodium atom with 11 electrons and electronic configuration of 2H1 combines with chlorine atom that possesses 17 electrons with an electronic configuration of 2H7. The sodium atom donates its only valence electron to chlorine to become a univalent sodium ion Na+, with an octet structure of 2H, while the chlorine atom accepts the electron to complete its outermost shell and forms a univalent chloride ion Cl- with an octet configuration of 288. In the formation of magnesium oxide, the magnesium atom exhibits an electronic configuration of 282 due to its 12 electrons, while oxygen has 8 electrons with an electronic configuration of 26. Magnesium donates its 2 valence electrons to oxygen and attains the octet configuration of 28 as magnesium 2 plus a divalent ion on the other hand the oxygen atom also attains the octet structure by accepting the two electrons from the magnesium atom to form the divalent oxide ion o2 minus as shown on the screen in the formation of magnesium chloride a divalent metallic atom combines with a univalent non-metallic atom to form a compound. Hence, two atoms of the non-metallic atom will be required. So, each of the two valence electrons of magnesium are donated to two different chlorine atoms to form magnesium chloride, an aggregate of magnesium and chloride ions as seen on the screen. Now that we know how ionic compounds are formed, let's look at the way they behave. As stated earlier, the products of ionic or electrovalent bonding are ions. Hence, ionic compounds are made up of aggregates of ions held together by strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the oppositely charged ions called ionic bonds. High amount of energy is always required to break those bonds between the ions. Therefore, they have high melting and boiling points. Also, the ions are closely packed in a regular cubic lattice with a positive ion surrounded by six negative ions and a negative ion surrounded by six positive ions. Therefore, ionic compounds are crystalline solids at room temperature. They dissolve in polar solvents like water due to the interactions between the oppositely charged ions and the polar ends of water. Also, when they are heated or dissolved in water, they dissociate into freely moving ions, which makes them suitable for conducting electricity in their molten states or aqueous solutions. Hence, ionic compounds are said to be good electrolytes. 
you have to watch our tutorial videos on electrolysis via the link in the description to see how ionic compounds conduct electricity with the help of mobile ions. In our next tutorials, we will be looking at the second part of our series on chemical bonding, covalent bonding and the properties of covalent compounds. So keep a date and you'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this lesson, like, share this video, leave your comments and follow us on our social media platforms. Thanks for watching and always stay safe.